Good evening. The planning and zoning boards are now off order. Uh, Chris, you want to read his invocation? Sure. All rise. Heavenly Father, direct us in all of our deliberations this evening that the choices and decisions that we make here today will affect the citizenry and the city of Lake City in a positive and beneficial manner. This, as all things, we ask in your name. Amen. Marshall, I'll please. Here. Mr. Cooper? Here. Ms. Ellis? Here. Mr. Lobby? Here. Mr. Nelson? Here. There is no old business to go over this evening. We do have our minutes from our December the 7th meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Uh, I have Madam Chair and um, see no additions, corrections, or deletions. I move for their adoption as submitted. Second. Second. Comments approved to submitted. Thank you very much. First item of business this evening is a site plan review, SBR 2105 Sunstock. Is Mr. Kurtz here to speak to us? Good afternoon, Dalton Kurtz, Project Manager Order for Professional Services. Home address is 21313, 180th Street, Live of Florida, 32060. I will hand everybody a site plan and existing. Can you get back and then just wait. Thank you. Mr. Kurtz, would you raise your right hand? You swear the information you provide this evening will be true and correct to the best of your knowledge and information. I do. Thank you very much. So what you have in front of you, the image is of a former SNF store that was purchased by Southwest Georgia Oil and rebranded as a Sunstop. It's located off of Highway 90 and Lomond Street. Uh, as it stands right now, that dirt lot and small driveway leading to Lomond Street, a lot of the tractor trailers park there, run to the store, get some snacks. And it's just kind of been that way for a very long time. What our client proposes to do is to actually take that area and place a parking lot, or not a parking lot, but a fueling apron with two fuel pumps in there. It appears it's three that uh, farthest north one, it's actually just a DEF dispenser that will be accessible to smaller vehicles. Uh, the existing stormwater management facility will be expanded to take from uh, runoff from the, the pervious we're placing on there. Uh, at the direction of Dave Young prior to his departure, he did request that uh, Lomont Street up to the edge of the uh, parking lot be paved to handle truck traffic. I have a full set of plans here if anybody wants to see the uh, profiles and what we plan to do with the roadway. But for the most part, uh, it's gonna be minimal work as far as clearing anything out of here. Uh, bring up the base, in fact, uh, put down three inches of asphalt, curb and gutter all the way around, install water, diesel fuel dispensers, depth dispensers, and the permit has already been submitted to stormwater. And that is the extent of the project. Is there any questions for you all? So taking a look at uh, the set of plans, uh, this will be used in coordination, the entrance off of eastbound US 90 and Lamond Avenue, making in essence uh, through travel way for these large semi trucks you're discussing? Yes. Okay. Is there anyone else here this evening that wishes to speak to this matter? Further questions or discussions from the board? Mm 
How does city and DOT feel about it? Oh, DOT is good with it. Okay. We spoke with them. They're, they're okay with it. There being no further comments, public comment is closed. Do I have a motion to vote? Public comment. We'll be, we have a workshop at the end of this. Do we have a motion to vote? Uh, make a motion to approve site plan review SPR 21-05 as submitted by the proponent. Approved. Marshall. Oh, Mr. Adel? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Dogalis? Yes. Mr. Lodick? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Aye. Uh, site plan review SPR 2105 was unanimously carried by this court. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is site plan review 2106. Ferreira Funeral Home. I'm Todd. Your name and address, please, sir. I'm Todd Ferreira, 14493 Tim Roden Road, Glen St. Mary, Florida, 320. Six three. Yes, for the information you provide this evening to be true and correct to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. That's the whole capture project. Um, <clears throat> well, we we are, are trying to spruce up the the facility a few blocks away, and it 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 does. Uh, I think it's in the the zoning that's right next to some of the, the older the older homes and we were just wanting to repaint the awnings uh, excuse me the the shutters and a few things and i understand them. i need to come to you guys for that permission right. I, point of order madam chair yes um, i know we touched on this a little um with marshall while we were waiting for the meeting to begin what i'm seeing here is an application for a COA, but it's called a site plan review, yet there's no site plan in the packet. Is this a COA or is this an SPR? It should be a site plan review, yes. Okay, but even though the form is on a request for a COA, not a not a site plan review. Yeah, that was uh, done incorrectly. Okay. Yes. Uh, So what is changing about the site plan here other than uh, paint, sir? That's all we're, we're putting paint on uh, on the shutters. And uh, we're, putting, uh, we're using the same sign currently, but we're just uh, putting a different name on it. Okay, so this, this may have been received in error and called an SPR when in essence it should have been a COA for the HPA. So we'll, make, we'll need to make a note in the file on that one. Okay. That we're actually doing a request for COA on this one so that he doesn't have to come back at a later date. That's COA. Okay. And then one other question I had, and this is something we've we're still working out some growing pains. Uh, which one of these colors of gray are you using? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Body. Oh, it's this color. <laughs> I, I thought I would bring the uh, paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Match this aside. <laughs> yeah. Growing pain, slowly but surely. At least we're meeting again. Yes. Yes. Any further comments or questions? The 
There being no further questions, public comment is closed. May I have the vote? Straight up? Yes. Yes. Mr. Torgallis? Yes. Mr. Lottie? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Well, I don't know what the COA is, number is going to be, but your SPR 2106 has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion a second on that? What? Is there a motion and a second on that, or did you just call, no, we didn't. call the vote? I called the vote, and there should have been a motion and a second. I, I closed public comment <laughs> and looked around. Didn't we have a motion? No motion, no second. You just called straight. I thought Dan, I thought Dan called. Not what I'll make the motion. Good, thank you. And I'll second it. Excellent. You're approved. Thank, thank you very much. SBR 2107. Gateway Crossing. Good evening, Madam Chair. My name is Jay Brown with JV Pro. We're a civil engineering and surveying company from Gainesville. Um, and I'm here tonight uh, in regards to Gateway Crossing, lots two and three. And Gateway Crossing, as you probably know. Oh, you, you want to swear me in first? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Make it all official. Do you swear okay. that the information you provide this evening to be true and correct to the best of your knowledge and belief? I do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so again, this is related to Gateway Crossing, which is a commercial subdivision on the northwest intersection of US 90 and I-75. There's a Circle K on the corner and a Denny's and a True Hotel in there. So when you drive into the main entry road there, which is Centurion Way, uh, the first thing on your right is the Circle K uh, Fuel Convenience Center. And then what we're talking about tonight are the two lots just north of there. There was 10 lots originally in the subdivision. So several years ago, I think two or three years ago, we took lots two and three and we converted them into lots two, three, and 11, with 11 being a new lot for the subdivision. Um, that was intended for the design of a very specific commercial establishment that was going to have a lot of restaurants and it was designed so that each one of the restaurant buildings was on their own lot. We went through that process, we got the plat approved, uh, that was all done and then with COVID and everything the restaurant tours went away, the project design died and never got built. So fast forward now three years later, two I guess two years later, and um, they want to convert it back to two lots. So they want to make it right back to kind of the original design, which would be lots one, two, three, four, and no lot 11. So the main purpose of why we're here today is to take what was previously approved to convert lots two and three to two, three, and 11, and turn it back to two and three. Um, and then we're just doing some slight dimensional changes. So lot, the proportion of lots two and three are slightly different than the original. Um, and so what we have before you is two petitions. One is the replat to create the two lots again. And then secondly, there's an associated variance. And the reason why there's a variance is because in this area, all the property is zoned CHI and they require CHI and the land development regulations has a requirement for 200 foot of frontage. It also has a requirement for one acre. Um, and our lots meet the one acre requirement, they just don't meet the frontage requirement. And this variance has been granted with the original project. Then when we did the replat to make it three lots, and now we're requesting the same variance, which would apply to the newly created lots two and three. So I hope that explains what we're here. So essentially, you know, the replat, this would be the public hearing, the first public hearing for the replat. Uh, and then also the variance for to the lot width dimensions. So we are making these lots bigger than they were before. So hopefully that's not a problem. But other than that, I, I, it, I think it's pretty straightforward, but I'm, I'm certainly here to answer any questions anybody has. I can tell you one thing that one of the reasons why the dimensions are where they are is because the Circle K is planning to expand onto lot two. 
So that is the first order of business, then lot three would still be remaining. So that's kind of the genesis of why we're here and what's going on with this petition. So. I have your replat on one agenda and your variance on this another agenda. If that's the case, we'll so, hear them separately. And, so just, you know, just giving you a warning. Okay, I'll sit down and you know come back up a little later when you get through some other stuff. But so, whatever you desire, Madam Chair. On the replat, you're going back to a previous yes configuration configuration correct yes i've been here at the original and the second time and now this time yes that we've been handling this project in very good minutes. now refresh my memory this this free plat was due to a series of two restaurants that would be blanking sort of an open air yes. patio area yeah. and a very interesting kind of design configuration yep that's like exactly that's correct important. Yeah, there was, a, you're right, there was actually going to be four restaurants. Okay, uh, but they were split between a, a common shared yeah. patio yes. with parking around the 100% yeah. perimeter. Yes, okay. that was a very good memory. We called it the colonnade at the time. That was, it was okay. a special design, and they would have loved to do that, but the, the buyers all backed out. Um, so it, it just never materialized. Okay, I, I, I remember this now, Madam Chair. So you're just eliminating... The new lot 11. Right. That's and correct. reincorporating it back into lots two and three. You got it. That's exactly correct. Where it started with the But it started with the variance on it. So now we got to put a variance back on it. Right. Are there, is there anyone else here this evening to comment on this? Lord, do we have further comments? Simple housekeeping. Being no further public. Comments. May I have a motion? I'll move in. I'll second that. Marshall. So, Mr. Adel? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. J. Gallas? Yes. Mr. Lydic? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Yes. We'll call you back. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Stay sworn in. Munsonette, SBR 2108, a service department expansion. Good evening, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Bill Menadier, M E N A D I E R, with Dubery Engineers on behalf of the applicant, uh, 654 Southeast Bay Drive. You swear the information you provide this evening will be true and correct for the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes. So before you tonight, we have the um, service building expansion for the Ron's Met Buick GMC dealership. Uh, it's a little less than 16,000 square foot. Uh, we've provided the associated parking, uh, ADA accessibility. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to connect to existing city utilities. Uh, we're providing stormwater via exfiltration which is underground. Um, we have a discharge in the northwest corner, which will ultimately discharge into the DOT system on the other side of 90 into a, a retention basin. We will be applying to the DOT for that permit. Um, the stormwater permit through the Water Management District will be applied for via uh, self-certification, 10-2 self-certification. Um, it's a pretty straightforward project. I don't know how much more detail I need to provide. Uh, if you have any questions, I will entertain those. Oh, I did want to address the landscaping as well. We, we are providing a hedge along St. John Street with some trees, a continuous hedge with, with uh, magnolia trees. Uh, we, we have a perimeter landscaping throughout that, that meets I would say minimum requirements through the city, um, but I just wanted to point that out as well for the surrounding neighbors. Um, can someone please assist me with a page number of where the elevational drawings for the, the structure are? The wetland drawings? Yeah, the wetland drawings. No, the actual site plan itself. Or did that get cut off on one of these oversized drawings? There is no, I have no site plan in mind. 
the zoning so zone yeah, because the location. So it's a site plan review with no site plan. I, I have one if you'd like to look at it. We 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 submitted eleven hard copies. I'm surprised <laughs> nobody has a copy. You can move on. Okay. Just pass them around. So you're looking into the FDOT drainage system on the north side. So there's an existing curve inlet at the northwest corner of um, not St. John's, but the one in between the two, uh, the dealership and where we're proposing our site. There's a curve inlet, which that type of conveyance system ties into the 90 conveyance system, which goes on, on the north side. And there's a there's a stormwater facility, you know, about a block north of, of 90, and it'll discharge it to there, and now that ultimately discharges into the, uh, the lake. Because uh, two blocks off of St. John's is <laughs> Lake Isabella, and Lake Isabella is far as experiencing drain. So with with our stormwater design, we 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 design it to a pre and post condition. So so we model the precondition to determine how much is currently running off that site. Actually, <coughs> varies in elevation from the southeast corner to the northwest corner by about three or four feet. And so we we model the stormwater volume that's coming off the site as it is now. And then our our post construction conditions don't exceed that amount. So we're not increasing what's going there. And we designed it to the 100 year storm event, the, the DOT, all their wonderful storm events. We just had a, uh, a question about percolation. What percentage of your property is for the I'd have to look at the site plan, but the majority of the pavement is, the asphalt is only surrounding the building, the drive aisles and, and the parking immediately in front of the building and to the rear of the building. The parking we're provided on the side is going to be a gravel type parking uh, area, stabilized, of course, you know, to, to handle the vehicular loads. Um, so asphalt and gravel? Not millions. We, we're proposing like a geo web, geo mat that that's, uh, sort of has it's like, it looks like a web and, and it fills in with the gravel so that geomat helps uh, accept the vehicular loading so that we're not rutting up the, the grass, but it, it, it will support vegetation after a while. And all that's accounted for in the stormwater calculations. <clears throat> Madam Chair, I did set out a site plan staff review to everyone in the city. Not everyone has responded back to it yet. Since this is between two lakes, what are they Are they involved in this? Yes. We'll, we'll get, we have to get a water management term, the district permit. And that's what I say. It's a 10 2 self certification. Recently, they've actually been reviewing them. But we will receive a permit from them and, and DOT for the drainage. You only want this up? While that's going around, I have a, another question on your uh, landscaping diagram. I saw that the, uh, the hedging went around the entire circumference of the property at the sidewalk line, except for the side facing uh, the historic district of which the, the legal boundary line runs there on McCray Ave. Structures across it have certain historic preservation protections on them. Um, is there a reason why the decorative hedging can't go around that fourth side of the the circumference of the property? There's no reason. I, I don't I don't know why that was left off, but it wasn't intentional. We can uh, okay. provide additional screening if we need to. Because one of the things this board discussed when uh, when the project proponent had requested permission to demo those old 1930s and 1940s houses that were on this parcel originally, uh, given the proximity of the historic district, it was you know understood that the proponent knew that there would have to be some sort of either vegetative or, or hard shielding 
of the modern structure from the from the historic district. So if you could continue the hedges around the, the last 25% of that property, that will eventually grow into a into a semi green barrier. Yeah, I don't I don't see that being an issue. That's on the grade on the west side of the yeah. property. Okay. <laughs> Plus, that probably look better. Better than an empty lot. Yeah. Now, hey, you I, got I think you got parking over there, right? Yeah, that'll be that'll be parking for you know the vehicles that are waiting to get picked up. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll put some parking there. I believe the reason I left it off just because it was a sort of the main road and, and I you know wasn't sure we needed to shield it, but I think it'll look good if we if we had a hedge there and it's not a, a little hard protection time. too for the vehicles, you know, like it's not a fence, but it's it's a deterrent and it's sure. you know for people walking on the sidewalk. Sure. So, <clears throat> Madam Chair, you asked a question about percolation. What's the rate of percolation with your entrance detail um, <clears throat> with the non uh, concrete or asphalt <coughs> surface you're going to use? I see a picture of it here. This view of textile underlying. Um, is there a percolation rate on that compared to like, uh, you know, a solid surface like asphalt? There is. So, so the you know the comparison rates on that. So, so the way that we do stormwater is with we assign curve numbers, curve numbers to different surfaces. Like, so pavement would be like say a ninety-eight, and then so that gravel surface, we I, I believe we used seventy-five. So it, it 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 perks much better than 98. 98 is you know almost like impervious, yeah, you know, it, uh, 100% if you will. But so so it's slightly better, but it account it certainly accounts for runoff because not all of it's going to soak in. So so it's, um, but the actual percolation in the system is based on the underlying soils, and so we we ran it through the big exfiltration system with our stormwater modeling software, and that's how we determined. What would ultimately discharge to the DOT system? Yeah, so it'll meet all those requirements. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool stuff. Okay, cool. Well, I'm just a little curious why you picked magnolia trees. I like magnolia trees. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> we can do oaks if you like. When you were a kid, you never had to pick up those leaves, did you? <laughs> but they were excellent climbing trees. You did great with that. Climb. Yeah. That's what she was saying, and I do. I know that they're, they're big, large leaves too. I've got some in my yard. Yeah. And they grow quite large. They do. They do. I mean, so I was thinking of of fast growing trees to to provide a shield, if you will. And I thought that magnolias grow a lot faster than the, the oak trees would, and they don't stretch out as much towards the building, so trimming wouldn't be as much of an issue. So that's kind of the thought process behind it, but we can put any kind of tree you may suggest. Really. Don't put a water up in. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like palm trees. Are they considered a shade tree? <laughs> I, I always look for a palm tree uh, when I go down to the I'm like, I'm working under the palm tree. There you go. I can find it. I will say that the landscape plan is the minimum for the city's requirements. And I can't. I don't want to speak for the, for the applicant too much, but I I would imagine they would do a decent job landscaping that that perimeter for this new 
building and it, it may be more elaborate than what I'm showing there, but it'll definitely meet the minimum. If they don't, I'm pretty sure more of the plan. <laughs> Marshall will be on it. That's it. Any further questions? Any further comments? <laughs> SBR and public comment, SBR committee to report the agency one question. May I have a motion for the budget? Make a motion for SBR 20. 08. With the uh, amendment that uh, the vegetation plan be amended to take into account the McCraig Foundation. I'll second that. Told by Marshall. Mr. Adel? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Gallus? Yes. Mr. Lottie? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Thank you. At the point of clarity, do, it, do you need me to submit an electronic copy so we can get the site plan on, on the record? I believe we have it, otherwise, it's not in the back. Yes. Yeah, if you would, I'll email it to the growth management. Okay. Email. Is there another step after this? Apologize, my ignorance here for the process. But. We know where to find you. There is. Okay. <laughs> you can get it back. You need it back. Yeah, he needs it. Oh. I'm just going to do it. You just need a visual copy from it. Yes. Uh, appreciate it. Last item on our work agenda is zoning change for Florida Gateway Drive RV Park, C2108. Mr. Burks. Alton Curtis, North Florida Professional Services Project Manager, address is 21313 Street, Lives of Florida, 32060. Mr. Curtis, do you swear this information you provide this evening to be true and correct to the best of your knowledge and belief? I do. Uh, so, um, I'm not sure, kind of piggyback on the questions from the issue prior. When this is submitted to the uh, growth management portal, you guys get the same thing that I'm holding in my hands right here because I actually didn't print off six copies for everybody. Mm, we saw that the last time this came before the board, but I did not see one of those in our packets. Um, well, I've got this thing. No, I didn't have one for the packet. But would we have a site plan in, being that this is not a site plan review, this is merely a rezoning? Yes, that's correct. But it has remained unchanged from the last time I was up here, September 30th, submitted it, a uh, little bit of time went by, nothing happened, nothing happened. And I got a hold of Mike Williams, interim city manager, and he concluded that it had just been lost, apparently. And so that's why I'm back here. There was no, no meeting minutes from that planning and zoning meeting at the time. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of restarting this over again. I'll, let you see this, and you guys might recognize this. But it's an eight and a half acre chunk of a larger 40 some acres, I believe, right off of I 75 and Florida Gateway Drive over by the Camping World RV Center. The clients want to build an eight and a half acre RV park. Uh, they'll be looking to get 40 or 50 spaces out of it. Stormwater management permit, uh, obviously, city permits. It was behind it, right? Correct, yes. It's going to be to the south of Camping World and where Florida Gateway Drive dead ends. They would improve that a little bit to facilitate a turn in right there. And then they would literally just section off at eight and a half acres. And the way the rezoning is doing it is we're rezoning it under Daniel Crap since he's the property owner right now. Once it's rezoned, he'll then sell it to the client. Thank you. 
Discussing this, but I don't think that one. No, just the bad part of it. The overall parcel is 70 some odd acres, and I think this is a proposal to just rezone the northern eight acres. Correct. And so, in essence, acres, how many sites are you anticipating? Uh, eight and a half acres, and we're going to try to get 40 to 50 RV sites out of it. We got a budget roughly half acre, three quarters of an acre for a pond. The rest of it's going to be roads, uh, a dog park, different stuff like that. And then the actual RV spaces themselves, which are going to be a type of impervious, or excuse me, impervious type of gravel that they pull onto. So in essence, this will create, at least until the eight and a half acres is sold off from craps to your proponent. It'll create a parcel that has two zoning designations. Yeah, uh, in that little time frame prior to being sold, I believe that would be correct. Yes. Will the computer really even allow you to enter that into the system? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on. Uh, from city administration standpoint, is this something we can do prior to the sale? Thus creating a situation where one single parcel has two different zoning designations? I would have to talk to uh, Mr. Dial, internal manager, manager, see if that can be done. I, mean, I, I don't see this being a problem. I just don't want necessarily for this board to approve something that happens to be administratively illegal. Administratively illegal. Since we've already visited this before. It was approved last time. Well, it wasn't for the zoning change. We were doing a site plan review on it before, I think, but then we, it, it was a zoning we, change. Oh, it was a zoning yeah, change. Just before? zoning change. Okay. For some reason it got for some reason it got tabled or I don't think it got shot down. It got, well my we have to go back in the way back machine. Because of the scope. There was a question as to the scope of it the last time it came up. Uh, because of the overall acreage and the 50 units and that road is not paved beyond there. No. Uh, there was a question about paving of the road, um, the overall scope of the pool project. Um, we had a lot of questions about it last time. Because the entrance to it is actually not going to go past where that road ends on Florida Gateway Drive. That small chunk of property at the end is owned by an advertising company, and it's zoned uh, CHI right now. And that's what we're just trying to do is match that so we can be in compliance for having an RV park out there. They're not going to build past the end of Florida Gateway Drive. <clears throat> They're going to make enough of an improvement off of Florida Gateway Drive to just bring it into that property right there. That makes sense. Yeah, next to it's next to it was, it was an issue if you. Not going further with that road because it was wet like back there. But behind it, you have the acreage you were just putting in the park. Uh, the RV sells the front, but then the RV came inside behind it. Correct, yes. Yeah. So we went up the board. We've got the site surveyed and delineated and marked off. So uh, whatever this process needs to be for me to submit that to the property appraiser's office and get everything delineated correctly, uh, just let me know and I'll get that knocked out. Well, we did a site plan review. Wouldn't we have had, had the proper zoning to do that? I think we had to table it because it was discovered that it was the incorrect zoning. So something had occurred. We'll have to go back in our minutes and, and take a look at this. But we have seen this before. It has come before us. And for some reason, we couldn't move forward on it. We did not approve it. We did table it. This was not approved. Yeah, it's Mike Williams. He went back to pull the minutes from the meeting and couldn't find any minutes whatsoever. So that was the other issue, too. Well, I know that we didn't approve it. I mean, we don't keep these recordings. Much <laughs> time. <laughs> So with, the, my time. so with the exception of the 
administrative issue of assigning parcel ID 024S160-2714 two separate and unique zoning identifiers. That notwithstanding, uh, this is just a simple request to change from a CI to a CHI? Yes. Okay. Can you just inform me that since we have legal descriptions for both of the parcels, that would clarify the legalities of it. Okay. So we've got legal descriptions for the eight and a half acres and legal descriptions for that remaining 16. <coughs> so, okay, so when, we, so when they type it into the computer, it's not going to shut all the city's lights off? No. <laughs> okay. And Daniel perhaps is not going to come back and say, y'all promise me I'll be a big giant tip. I make no promises for what Mr. Kraps is going to do. <laughs> Further questions or comments on this issue? <laughs> there being no further questions or comments on Z2108, comments are closed. May I have a motion to call the vote? Madam Chair, I move that we approve Z21-08 as submitted by the agent for proponent. Mr. Adel? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Gallus? Yes. Mr. Lydic? Aye. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Zoning change for Z21-08 has been approved. Uh, and one quick question, does this automatically go to the city council for them to put it through their process as well for rezoning? Yes, oh. it does. Okay. And that will be on the day. That will be two readings, right? Yes, two readings. That's correct. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. There being no further business to come before the Planning and Zoning Board public meeting of January 4, 2020. May I have a motion to adjourn public meeting? Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. <laughs>